brought to you by Hula Frog, local things for kids to do. HulaFrog.com. Hello, and thanks for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hula Frog. I also like to thank our guest sponsor, Macaroni Kid. Uh, another thanks to Arizona Families, Mildred and Dildred, and Williams Magic Shop. If you guys want to figure out what supplies you're going to need for each episode, you can go to illusionistmichaelhowell.com and there will be a supply list at the top of uh, the Illusionist Michael Howell live page. Uh, this actually week's list is kind of small because we're only doing one experiment. Uh, if I'm not uh, performing and doing magic, then uh, I'm not doing my job. I like doing magic because I like putting smiles on people's faces. So I'm happy that I get the opportunity to do this show for you guys each and every day. Now, uh, we're still on a kick. I really like these tricks. I don't know if you've seen any of the other episodes where we have different pictures. That's a picture of a hat. Um, but the hat needs something. Uh, it needs a little bit of color, but it's also missing something else. What? Ladies and gents, the hat is now a clown. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and hopefully uh, those of you afraid of clowns aren't scared of that picture. My fiance is afraid of clowns. Um, but yeah, so we have a few more of those uh, cool color magic tricks uh, coming up. I have a master class that I'm teaching uh, at the end of this month, uh, and uh, we're getting a lot of signups. So if you guys want to sign up, it's ages 7 to 17. Make sure you go to illusionistmichaelhowell.com and find out more information about that. I have a magic show called Magical Journey. Um, the location right now is at the Berger Performing Arts Center uh, due to the coronavirus and the pandemic right now. Uh, things may change, but I am promising that you guys will see a live magic show. I'm working on some other concepts and ideas. At the moment, um, uh, Ramsden Production and Magic Factory LLC, which is my company, is putting together Chuck Wagner a Live, Broadway star. He was on last week's episode. Um, so, uh, we're going to bring him to town and he's going to do a concert and hopefully I get the opportunity to sing with him because I sing as well. Uh, we are going to do some magic for you here. I'm going to get my beautiful assistant Jerrica on screen. I'm just getting some of my props. I got my awesome soda bottles here. You guys see them? Soda bottles. Woo! I at least have to say woo once or twice in <laughs> every episode. These really cool handy dandy tubes. So Jerrica, you get your own bottling and you get your own handy dandy tube. And I get my own bottle. I'm gonna teach you how to do this, just follow along. And uh, you also and I also get my own handy dandy tube. So you're gonna put your bottle in your hand like this. Alright. <laughs> First trick is getting the bottle of balance in your hand. <clears throat> then you're gonna take your tube, the balancing the bottle in the hand, that seems to be the hard part there. <laughs> then <clears throat> you're gonna take your tube and put it over the bottle. All right, and then on the count of three, you guys count with me. You're gonna just flip it to the other hand and I'll show you what I mean. Just do it after me. One, two, three. Flip it like that. One, two, three, there you go. Don't cover me up, make sure they can see both of us. All right, guys. And now the bottle is still right side up. All right, Jerrica, show off your bottle. <laughs> no, you you didn't do it. You didn't do it right. We're gonna do it again. All right. All right. You didn't even have. You don't have to take off your 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 thing all the way. Just you can show it off like that. See. <laughs> See, and she's my magic assistant, guys. <laughs> All right, so keep it upside down in your hand like this. On the count of three together, we're gonna flip it over. Ready, one, two, three, woo! Okay, guys, so obviously the bottle should be right side up. Jerrica, good job, we got that right. The tricky part is doing it the other way around, okay? So we're gonna flip it over really fast. I snapped, because that just makes it sound cool. And it's right side up. No, Jerrica. Here, flap. We're going to flip it back around like that. All right, obviously it's right side up. It's not that difficult. See? Now we're going to do it again. All right. Why don't we snap? Obviously. Oh, <laughs> now both of them are upside down. That's crazy. I don't know. I got a headache. I'm going to go ahead and put that stuff down here. That was fun. Oh, man. 
crazy, crazy. Guys, I love magic. I really miss performing live. So I'm really excited about the opportunity to perform live in front of a live audience. It's definitely not the same getting to perform on this YouTube show that I get to do for you guys. But I'm blessed that I got to do, I get to do this because at least I get to perform, right? We are gonna do our science experiment. Uh, you're gonna need your baby food jar. Um, surprisingly, Jerrica was really excited because she got to eat the baby food, but so was I, because we're weird like that. But you're gonna need your own little baby food jar. Uh, you're gonna need salt. Ba bomb that's a giant thing of salt. Um, you're gonna need a marble and a spoon. Now I'm very sanitary. I cleaned and washed my marbles so that it would be good and clean. Make sure you have a nice clean spoon. Um, I set it on paper towel. You don't have to do that. You can do this anyway. But what we're gonna do guys is we're going to make butter. Now I have forgot one important uh, thing. It's the heavy, um, the whipping cream. So you're gonna need that as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys have made butter before, but it's so fun. And these are the items you're gonna need. So, you're gonna start by filling uh, your baby food jar halfway full with some whipping cream. Okay, guys. This is and this is this is a fun project, and it actually takes about five minutes. So that's about halfway. Um, it takes about five minutes. So during this episode, Jerick is gonna shake this bottle, and even if she's assisting me, I'm gonna. It's her challenge. The whole episode, she's gotta shake the a bottle to make the butter. Um, so then after that, you're going to add a, uh, a half teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this is cool, a cool science experiment because at the end, guys, you can eat it. It's really cool. Make sure you refrigerate it because that's important. There we go. I think that's probably good. What do you think, Jerry? Is that good? Yeah? All right. She approves, guys. And that's why we're getting married. No. <laughs> and then last but not least, you're going to add... It's very hard to see uh, this marble here. So you're gonna put that in there. Boop, made a loud noise. And then you're gonna make sure that when you're doing this, you put the lid on really tight because it would be really gross and get everywhere. And then you're just gonna shake it. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your shake. Shake that butter. Shake that butter. Sing with me, guys. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake that butter. Shake that butter. Or if you have a rhythm, you guys can do like different rhythms. Be like uh, in Tucson, Arizona, we got Mr. Nature. He does he does different rhythms. So like this would be your shaker. It'd be cool if Mr. Nature had these at his shows. And be like kids, you're gonna be my my maraca shakers, and then um, you're gonna be the bongos. Yeah. So just basically shaking this. It, it should take a while. Let's see, it's definitely getting thicker. And it just takes time, guys. It's gonna get thicker, 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 thicker. And like I said, it takes up to five minutes. And I didn't realize how loud this was, so Jerrica doing this this whole time might be a bad idea. But uh, we can definitely, uh, you, can you can see it at home when you gotta do it. But basically, uh, let's see what, let's see how it looks right now. Smells good. It's getting a little thicker, as you can if you can see that. Um, but Jerrica, I think we're gonna stop. But that's how you guys make butter. Again, they say it takes up to five minutes. So, and then the great thing about this, like I said, is you can eat it. So here we go. I'm gonna give that to Jerrica. Bada bing, bada boom. Pretty darn cool. I'm gonna finish it. Oh, she just stuck her hand in it. <laughs> oh, she's taking the marble out so she can keep shaking because. Uh, you don't have to have the marble in there. I mean, it's just harder. The marble just makes it easier while uh, making the butter. Now, it's that time of the episode, guys, where uh, we get to have our guest, Niels Don Donker. He, he might correct me here if I say his name wrong. Uh, amazing juggler from Holland. Uh, so here we go. Let's go into the screen. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Illusionist Michael Howell Live. How you doing, man? Very good. Thanks for having me on your show. Thanks for coming on, man. So uh, I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but uh, who inspired you to become a juggler? 
Well, like actually, like, there was a street performing festival in Rotterdam. I grew up in the Netherlands, and right now I'm here in the United States. I'm in Ohio, and in Rotterdam, there was a street performing festival every uh, at the end of every summer, and my dad took me there every year. And then I saw the jugglers that came, different jugglers that came to perform every year at the, the, fest, at the festival. Wow. And it really inspired me. I just loved how people can come with a suitcase, stop a bunch of people on the street, really entertain them, and then uh, make everybody happy. So that inspired me. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's the kind of cool thing about like what I do with magic. You can just go set up and, on the streets with, with a suitcase. And yeah. there's a lot of things that play big and pack small in magic. So being able to catch people's eye, you know, it's a real skill, but it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I really liked it, how pure it was. Like you, this is one-on-one. -on -one. There's no computers or companies or something. Like the performer did something and then the people are laughing. Like it's immediately from, from sender and to receiver. From what I've seen too, you do a lot of, like, you do comedy as well, right? Do you comedy? Yeah, so my website is comedyjuggler.com, and I've figured out, like, if you only juggle, it's real, real cool. But after seven minutes, like, it's more difficult for people to connect with the performer. If you do the right. comedy with it, you have so much more. You can still do all the cool stuff, all the cool tricks, and then with the, and then you make them laugh at the same time. So it's not like either or, like, it's uh, an and, and it just makes such a better experience for the people. Gotcha. Putting it together is really entertaining. You know, uh, I started out trying to be like David Blaine or like David yeah. Field and I wanted to be the coolest magician. And then I realized that my niche was comedy and yeah. that people really like that. Um, what's the most dangerous thing that you juggle? You don't do um, yeah, right now, like I'm working on a new prop. Like it's a, it's a V and then you bounce the balls inside. Okay. But like if, if you miss that one, your crotch is right on the right level where it burns out. So for me, that's the most dangerous oh, object right now. Like, so it's, that's for me, that's more dangerous than juggling the knives at the moment until I get better at it. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, I am a, I wouldn't call myself a professional juggler, um, but I do a little bit of juggling in my shows here. Yeah. I have the, the juggling balls you light on fire. And man, I don't know. The, the ones I have, maybe this is the kind I have, they're hard to get lit. Yeah. <laughs> but once yeah, I get it's, lit, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always with the, the stuff like that is perceived dangerous for the audience, or was like actually real dangerous for the performer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if, especially if you do so many shows, you do, you want to eliminate the real danger uh, exactly. from the show because everything all can go wrong, eventually will go wrong. Right. And yeah, like like what Penn said as well from Penn and Tell, it's just stupid if you just put yourself in danger. <laughs> if you put something that is perceived dangerous, yeah and you perform it and you do it well that's that's art that's beautiful and if you that's, just do something real dangerous stuff and you put your audience or yourself in danger it's just stupid that's crazy and then you get tired after doing it over and over again and you make that mistake that puts you in the hospital so you don't want to do that but now yeah. i i've noticed uh when i juggle them because i do juggle them they aren't like they're not i mean they're sharp but it, with impact they can do some damage is what i've noticed yeah, certain brands are heavier too, and then uh, especially if you do knives behind the back, the tip of the of the blade is still pretty close to your eye, so you still have to be very careful. I I've seen them go. Um, luckily, I put down like uh, I had a special floor down when this happened, but it went it goes in, it went into the stage, and then um, it was just bad. I cut my fiance. Oh dang! I was juggling and I was juggling towards her face, which is obviously, like you said, it's dangerous, but. <laughs> Oh wow! I like that excitement and that, and uh, I just cut the tip of her chin, and, and that's and, I mean, she, and she stuck with you. So actually, yeah, I know we're was, still getting married. Like you. Yeah, so <laughs> like I said, you, uh, people like 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 that almost that danger feel. But it's like, funny like, because with the jokes with the knives, it was like when you do behind a bag, like putting future lives at risk. But like with the, your knife, you really like put future lives possibly at risk yeah, if you get I, married to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yep uh so how did you learn i mean did you like watch youtube videos those pe the, the people that inspired you did they teach you uh so i was i've been juggling for over 20 years now so youtube did not exist by the time when i started juggling so it was already like you have to dial in and then it was like so like internet was like uh, not really a thing to look up juggling resources so actually i uh a friend uh a dad, like the father of one of my best friends at the time, he was juggling a little bit as a hobby. And then there was some stores in the Netherlands where you can buy some juggling props. And then uh, I found a book in the library as well. So a couple of things came together at the same time. And uh, that's how I started juggling. And then after six months, um, right after the summer, I got to join the kids circus in Rotterdam. Wow. And uh, then I met like uh, more like 
my like uh like-minded kids that uh also juggled and then i just kept going that is awesome it's funny how people give up so fast when they're trying to juggle yeah <laughs> they get so frustrated with it and that was me like originally like i know with the juggling balls like i used to like throw this one up and it passed the other one over uh-huh. And a lot of people, when they're starting out, do that. And then they get frustrated because they're like, I can't get this, that. Third. Yeah, in the beginning, there's a lot of, it's even, it's very simple to, to juggle three balls if you get the right coaching, if you know how to do it. Exactly. And it's so easy to get stuck on one little detail. And then if you don't know that and there's nobody that can point it out to you, it becomes very frustrating because then you just hit the wall and then you don't know how to continue. And then they give up. So I can only do three balls. I can do a lot of different tricks with three balls, but I'm nice. Been- to do four and that's yeah i mean i juggle i mean the basic i mean you can tell me if i'm right the basic would be juggling two balls in one hand is that correct yeah correct and for everybody that wants to look it up actually on youtube i put a bunch of tutorials and uh, a lot of people seem to like them so i'm gonna like my four ball tutorial got like about a million uh views so if you just put like how to juggle four balls for your viewers most likely they will find my tutorial and they will see like yeah, well, depending you described, like I do that one. So I have red balls, red balls in one hand and blue ones in the other one. And then people can see the difference in the pattern, how they move through. And where do you perform mostly? Uh, right now, I'm in Ohio, in a town called Berlin. And I'm here at the Amish County Theater. So this is my resident gig for this season. Before that, I was three years at the longest running clean comedy variety show in the United States, which is the Comedy Barn. Wow. It's uh, now owned by the Dolly Parton Corporation. It was an 800 seat theater where we did two shows a day. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that was real cool. And before that, I was on the cruise ship. So those were the three uh, main gigs I've done uh, since I graduated from college. That is amazing, man. Uh, and like you gave a little bit of info of where people can find out more information about you. But where else? Like you have like, website, Facebook. Like, yes, yeah, so basically the easiest because like in the U.S., my name, Niels Danker, is very difficult to write for a lot of people. So if you go to comedyjuggler.com, and then you can hit the icons for YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. Okay, yeah, and I know I pronounce your name terribly. <laughs> oh, like, no, actually, you were, you were close. Like, it's, uh, like, here, it's like, uh, I was even thinking, should I change my name to a little bit different stage name for here? But then also, it's kind of cool if they see the spelling of my name. They know okay. it's an international act. So it's like kind of like pros and cons. So for my show here, the show itself is called Morning Throwdown. Okay. It's, uh, it's, and uh, that's a one-hour uh, juggling show. It's my own, my own show. And okay. then I perform in the evening shows here as well. Um, but yeah, like I thought, like, I, that is the, the show name. And then my real name, I just keep it so people can see that it's, uh, it's an international act that has some draw to it as well. That is so cool, man. Um, so uh, you told me that you were going to send over some video, which we have. And we're going to play. Yeah, actually, like this is the show I just mentioned, Morning Throwdown. Uh, that is the opening video to my show. So people get a little bit of feel what I do and I get the feel off of the show here as well. So I thought it was the perfect combination. Oh, that's wonderful, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to play that video. Cool, it was great. And uh, maybe we'll get to work together someday. Thank you so much. All right. Thank well, you. see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Welcome to the Amish Country Theater for the show Morning Throwdown, featuring eight-time Guinness World Record holding juggler Niels Diker. Niels is the original Dutchman here in Amish country. He is originally from Holland. His juggling and comedy shows have taken him all over the world, from Las Vegas to Dubai and from Tokyo to Berlin. First, the Berlin one in Germany and now the one right here in Holmes County, Ohio. You may have seen him perform at the world famous Comedy Barn Theater in Pigeon Forge, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, or on board Disney Cruise Line. Niels is excited to be here with you today and sharing his crazy AM antics. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get your morning funnies in and please welcome to the stage. Here is the comedy record breaker, Niels Danker. Wow, that was incredible, guys. That is amazing. What a great juggler. Uh, we had we wanted to show you guys what he could do, um, and unfortunately he wasn't able to perform during the interview. So he uh, sent us a clip to show you guys so we could share, uh, so you could see what he did. He's incredible. So thanks so much, man, for coming on again. Thanks to Macaroni Kid for being our guest sponsor. Uh, so guys, I was at a birthday party one day and I saw a clown with silks tied together like this. 
and he did a magic trick that just blew my mind. He took the silks and waved his hand over them so they changed colors. Ta da! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, guys, for this next, tri next trick, I'm gonna bring out my buddy, my duckling over here. I haven't named him yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna name him Quackers. Ah! <laughs> Actually, I'm a bit hungry right now, so I'm gonna have some Quackers probably after this episode. I'm gonna start off by uh, shuffling the cards. Maybe uh, another good shuffle. We're gonna get Jerrica on screen. Uh, okay, Jerrica, do me a favor. Tell me when to stop. Uh, a little faster than that. She's always trying to catch me here. All right, and go. Stop. Do me a favor. Take the top card. Look at it. Don't show me. Show everybody else. I'm closing my eyes. And then put it on top of the deck. Okay, did you put it on top of the deck? Okay, now I'm going to shuffle the card into the pile. Mess, mess it up here. Hmm. Now I'm gonna find your card. Dun, 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 dun. No, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm gonna let the duck do the work. This is uh, Quack is the duck. Let's see if he can figure out which card, guys, is her card. I'm gonna bring it close so you guys can see this. <laughs> Take the card out, ladies and gentlemen. He picked her card. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Big round of applause for Quackers, the duck. That was cool. <laughs> He's a good magician. I need to have him more more of my shows. Okay, guys, do you guys want to see some more magic? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I have to do your guys' voices because I don't have you here live. I miss performing live. This is very depressing. I have my beautiful treasure chest. I always wanted a treasure chest as a kid. And finally, my mom and dad bought me a treasure chest. And this is just a very special treasure chest. I'm going to show you guys what I mean uh, uh, by being such a special treasure chest. It's, 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 it's awesome. It's also got my favorite color on the inside, which is really cool. It's a cool treasure chest. It's an enchanted treasure chest. And I also like the call. My magical treasure chest. On the count of three, we're gonna say the magic words. Hula Frog, our sponsor is, the, is Hula Frog. So ready? One, two, three, Hula Frog. Now go ahead, open it up. And what do I find in the box? But a furry, adorable looking little rabbit. That's right, but guys, not just that little rabbit. <gasps> Another furry little rabbit. Uh, that is Ricky and Lucy, guys. That is my rabbit's names. Super awesome. I love them. They're adorable. I'm just going to move that over here. All right, guys. Now I have an animal rescue. I just actually rescued a guinea pig. It's a long-haired guinea pig. Um, kind of funny looking. His name's Teddy. And uh, this is the thing, guys. Not only is it always hard for an animal rescue uh, to raise money and stay around but now it's even harder because uh, people don't have jobs and they're not donating and it's, it's a difficult time guys and a lot of the, the corporate nonprofits, uh like the humane society and like the bigger ones are the ones that get the donations um so rose ranch animal rescues it's the rescue that i i run is in need of your help uh, we need to become a 501c3. That's about 600 bucks. So if you guys can go to our Illusionist Michael Howell page under the Illusionist Michael Howell live link, it says um, GoFundMe. Click that. Uh, and you can donate whatever you want. A dollar, 50 cents, everything helps. Um, or if you want a t-shirt, we're selling, we're selling them for $45, but that's a gift. That money goes 100% to Rose Ranch Animal Rescue. And let's not forget this awesome picture of me holding an animal that I'm gonna autograph that you guys can hang up on the wall to scare the bugs away. <laughs> All right, guys, I mean, uh, we I cannot stress to you how much we need your help right now. Uh, we just rescued that cock, we just got that cockatoo a home, we uh, found a home for a dog. Uh, more than ever, animals just keep coming in. So we need you guys to help spread the word. Go to our Facebook page, Rose Ranch Animal Rescue. Help us by just getting the word out, guys. It, 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 it needs it. 
Uh, we have a fan club, so please join the fan club. It's on illusionistmichaelhowell.com. It's one of the first things that pops up on the page. Go check that out. Um, and there's more information there. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. It's that time, guys. Jerrica, we don't have to worry about the butter. It takes five minutes. And uh, Oh, look at that. She actually has. It's uh, Most of it's starting to materialize, guys. Look at that. Into butter. So just keep shaking, 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 shaking. And I guarantee you that will turn into butter. Now it's that time where we have the joke of the day. Jerrica, what did the genie say to the mermaid? What did the genie say? That's not the joke. I'm just kidding, guys. Okay. Here we go, guys. I've even added an extra joke. We used to only do two jokes, but I I just find these amazing jokes, so I had to add a number three joke. Joke number three. All right, guys. Here we go. Jericho, what do golfers like to drink? What do golfers like to drink? A cup of tea. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and I thought it was funny because I I should I was supposed to say love, but I said like, so you knew that I said like because I kind of mumbled like like like. I had an accent when I said that. <laughs> All right. Uh, how did the telephone propose to his girlfriend? How did the telephone propose to his girlfriend? He gave her a ring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be here till the end of this episode, guys. <laughs> All right, last one. Why are frogs rarely angry? Why are frogs rarely angry? They eat whatever bugs them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'd like to thank you so much for watching this episode. I think it's episode nine of Illusionist Michael Howell Live, guys. We've gone through nine episodes. There's so much more in store for this uh, uh, the show. Uh, we've got some exciting announcements that we can't make yet, but they're in the works. Super excited about that. Uh, and we have so many incredible guests. I mean, we got Rake Park Zoo coming up in a couple episodes, uh, talking about the baby elephants. But next week, we have a really cool and special guest, professional, world famous skateboarder Keith White's gonna be on the show, maybe showing us some skateboarding tricks. I can't skateboard at all. Uh, I definitely test gravity when it comes to skateboarding, guys. Uh, so you definitely don't want to see me skateboard. And then um, I'm actually working on a new web show for uh, the grown-ups. It has like a PG rating. It's not going to be too crazy, but uh, me and my buddy Benny are doing a show, and it's called uh, Magic Squad. And the first episode is going to be July 10th at 7.30 p.m., Check it out. Super excited. We're doing pranks. He's a magician, a comedian. I like to call myself a comedian at some, time, some points. <laughs> I'm also a magician. I'll be doing some sideshow stuff, pulling pranks, magical pranks. It's going to be awesome. Check that out. Uh, and again, next episode, world famous skater Keith White is going to be on. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.